I want to present uh, what's commonly known as the Roman Road to Salvation. This is a great way to tell someone about Jesus. So if you have questions or if you want to tell other people about Jesus, pay attention because this is great. This is also the first way I learned how to share the gospel. It's based on scripture truths that are found in the book of Romans. Hi friends, I'm Miss Nancy Ruth. And I'm Mr. Roger. We want to see kids living for Jesus. There are, we start with three common attitudes towards sin that uh, uh, people have. And the first one of that is, I am a good person. Do I really need salvation? They don't understand their need for salvation. Uh, the scripture truth, though, is found in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sinning makes us fall short of the glory of God. Okay, and then uh, the second attitude that a lot of people have is, I am not a really bad person. Is all sin really that bad? Almost everybody considers themselves better than others. They are quick to forgive themselves for minor sins. But the scriptural truth, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Savior, Romans 6, 23. Now, we were talking about the three attitudes. I am a good person. Do I really need salvation? The second attitude was, I'm not a really bad person. Is all sin really that bad? And the third trait is, I am too bad to be saved. How can there be any hope for me? They consider themselves to have missed the mark with so many sins stacked up on their side of the scale that there's no hope. But scriptural truth, but got in, found in Romans 5, 8 through 10, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemy, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Hopefully, these uh, uh, persons uh, are searching and would ask the question, how can I be saved? Common attitude is, what do we need to do to earn our salvation? But the answer is, the task is too great for us. We need divine intervention. Because in order for us to be right with God, there has to be no sin. And the scriptural truth is found in Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess your faith and are saved. And some added thoughts on that. It is very important to fully understand what it means uh, to be for Jesus to be Lord of my life. It is quite different than being an employee, for example. Employees have clearly defined a job requirements, and uh, then when they're done with that, they go home and are, are on their own. Lordship over our lives includes absolutely everything and every minute of our lives. The Bible should be the source of the truth and the defining uh, a God-pleasing life. And that requires uh, a decision. 
which means humbling ourselves before the Lord, repenting, and after repentance, a lifestyle that is pleasing to God. Now, the following question after after this, uh, uh, how can I be saved? How can I be saved? Might be, did God accept me? It is extremely common to doubt your salvation, to doubt that God can really keep his promises and doubt that you are safe in Christ. But let's look at the scripture truth for that. This is found in Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angel nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation is able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Then we talked about how can I be saved? Did God accept me? And now the final question would be, what should I do now? The new child of God is embarking on the most exciting journey of his life. Where shall they, should they start? What should they do? Scripture truth tells us in Romans 12, 1 and 2, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good pleasing and perfect will. And again, I hope this gives you a way to share your love for the Lord and come to know the Lord and to share with those who are searching. And it is my prayer that this will happen. God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe. We post memory verses in four translations, key passages, answers to Bible questions, and more. Check out our store and freebies at parentroadmin.com. We love you, friends. See you next time.